Hey all, it's Andrew Couch here, and today we're gonna do a Tidy Tuesday video we're gonna, where we're gonna actually analyze the Animal Crossing data sets. So for these data sets, it actually has um, four of them where it comes with a critic review, a user review, items, and villagers. And I thought it'd be interesting to use the Tidy models and do some NLP modeling specifically on the user reviews. Uh, so we're going to load up the R markdown. Uh, we're going to load in Tidyverse first. Okay. And since we're going to do, since I know I'm going to do some text mining and some like NLP stuff, I'm going to load in the tidy text package first. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to kind of show, uh, the tidy framework of just making these models and specifically kind of going through uh, you know, the progression of like predictive modeling for that stuff. So I think it'd be interesting to go through, uh, you know, TF IDF to figure out if it's even generalizable, then do the basic lasso regression model, uh, and then maybe do a, a, a stronger black box model and then finish it up with like a Keras a neural network. So first we're just going to do a basic EDA of the user reviews. Um, the user reviews comes with a grade, which is like a rating. The, the username who made that grade, the text review, um, and also the date. So we don't really need the date. We mostly need the grade and the text. So first we're gonna count the grade and make a ggplot out of it. So x equals grade, y equals n. Okay, just so we can see a distribution of the scores. Um, and we can see that, uh, I guess it might be just with gaming reviews and stuff like that, or gaming user reviews, but it's very polarizing where people are either going to give it a zero or a 10. To me, it almost seems like a binary variable, right? You either like it or you dislike it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. It is a little odd because I thought um, people really liked Animal Crossing, but you know, you never know. Uh, maybe it's just an online thing. So we're going to actually do um, some basic exploratory analysis on text. And I usually just do, you know, the, the classic, you know, top 10 frequency for each grade, um, GM column, flip it, you know, yada, yada. But I think it'd be interesting to do maybe like a PCA analysis or some kind of type of clustering analysis. And I was looking at, um, Julia Silge's blog and saw that how she basically did her PCA stuff. Um, and it's actually a pretty fast, um, way to do it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do user reviews. Okay. We're going to select the grade. Oops. Grade and text. We're going to tokenize it. So we'll say word text call out. Good. Um, we'll, we'll count every word for each grade and then we'll anti join it with stop words, uh, anti oops, you know, we'll, we'll remove the stop words. And I, so if you see right here, um, this is actually like, I guess like Japanese or, or basically letters that aren't familiar with our, um, English vocabulary. So I'm just going to filter out, um, all words that don't show up more. I'm going to say like you, these words must show up more than five times. So. Um, less than equal to five. Oh, oops, uh, greater than equal to five. So that removed most of it, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then what we're going to have to do is, uh, we're going to cast, we're going to, eh. we have 4,000 tokens. Uh, we'll try it. We'll try it. So we're going to cast this into a sparse matrix. Um, or cast sparse and we'll say row equals grade column equals word and value equals N. What this does is basically creates kind of like this, this, uh, matrix where, you know, it's each, each row is a grade. Each column is a word. So it's essentially a document term matrix. So we'll say uh, sparse DF, right? And if we, if we actually look at the sparse DF, uh, you can see how, you know, there's like all this stuff, all right? Pretty simple. Okay. So 
first to actually do the PCA, PCA analysis, we're going to have to load up this package called IRLBA. And uh, basically the reason why we use this package instead of say like, um, like carrots, like PCA on um, pre-processing is apparently this, this package really takes advantage of the sparse matrix and makes it really fast. Um, so that's what we're just going to do. Um, and we use the PRC comp IRLBA. We give it our sparse DF. Um, I'm only going to make about four principal components. Um, we always scale it because it's necessary. Basically any, I think any clustering algorithm, you should scale it. So I'm going to say scale equals true. And we're going to do that. It ran pretty fast. We can look at it. So it has a principal components. Um, if you actually look at it, oops, I'm going to stop this. I think if we say class, it'll show, it'll show you that stuff. Um, maybe if we do structure, yeah, it'll show you all this other stuff. Um, well, I don't really care about that. Um, we, we kind of just want to grab the actual components. So what we're going to say is PCA text center, which if we look at it, um, it shows like, you know, all that stuff. Um, let's, let's actually do it. So it, it does all that. Um, it does all that. It's not in a great format, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the tidy format. So it ties it. So we have our names, our center. Um, I don't think we're going to really use the center yet. So I'm just going to select the names and I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to see bind PCA, PCA text, uh, and rotation. So what this does, it has all the names and their respective principal component values, or essentially what we're doing is going to cluster them. So now we're going to ggplot it out. Um, so our, we're going to compare, um, the first two principal components. Um, and we're going to say our labels are names and we're going to first do GM points to see if there's anything. So right now you can see there is some clustering going on, right? Um, these are the principal components basically try to like explain the variation. So it's saying like, okay, we have these clusters that can I explain it. Um, a good way to do this is we'll just do GM label. I uh, know we'll do a GM, uh, text, right. And we can see right here that there's some components right there. Um, village and stuff like that. Maybe I might make this a little bit bigger so I can see it dot high equals 15 fig dot width equals 15. Okay. So we're going to do that, do that. Cool. Oh no, it's doing this thing. There we go. So when we're looking at this, what are we, what are we seeing here? Music catching complaint. Interesting. Um, what's this storage tree, undistinguish something undistinguishable. Okay. Lovely stuff like that. Okay. So we kind of did, uh, you, you can see that there's, there's some type of cluster. One thing that's interesting is you can see how there's this little curve action going on. Right. Um, and then most of them are centered around here too. Interesting. So we're, we did a, a basic PCA analysis. Obviously you can go way farther. You can do more filtering. Uh, you can do other stuff. You can, you know, you might want to do a TF IDF and then assign colors to it. Um, stuff like that. You can do whatever you want with it, but we're not actually going to be doing that. So we're going to, yeah, actually I am going to do that. I misspoke. So I'm going to do a group by grade. And we're going to just take the top 25 words. So n, n equals 25 ungroup. Boom. Let's see if that runs ran there. For some reason, this thing isn't working again. Okay, then now we see a better explanation. There's definitely some defined clusters. So you see multiplayer villager system feels a lot. Makes sense. Island experience in Nintendo game, expand, playing games, people, time, progress, something about multiple player and progress stuff. So you can see that there is actually some de definitive clusters in here that make kind of sense, make that actually kind of make a lot of sense. Right. Um, which is pretty interesting because, you know, it's not really doing, it's not really learning, uh, 
it's not really learning actual text data, text like uh, NLP or natural language understanding, but it's just doing it through um, just a basic PCA algorithm. Cool. Okay. But we're not really doing, we don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, what we're going to do actually is we're going to first do a TF IDF analysis. And this is because we want to figure out if this, if this is generalizable. Okay. So we did a clusters to figure out like, you know, okay, if there's any interesting clusters and we can kind of assume that there might be a relationship to grade, but we should actually find, you know, um, what are the, what are the distinguishable words for each, um, grading point? And we know that grade is actually kind of like a discrete variable because it's not continuous. It's just in, in it's an integer. Um, so we, we can kind of use it as a, a categorical variable. I'm not really sure if that's the correct way to do it, but we can just do it for this ad hoc analysis. Okay. So we're going to unnest tokens word, uh, oops, word text, right? You already know how it is. So we're going to count, uh, grade word bind TF IDF. Uh, what is it? Word grade and group by grade top and TF IDF n equals five ungroup. Okay, cool. Uh, what the arguments and word up oh, so we're grade wrong. All right. And I should also do anti join stop words filter and it's greater than equal to up oh, and is greater than equal to five. All right. Cool. GG plotted out X equals word Y equals TF IDF fill equals grade plus GM com plus scale X reordered fast to wrap it out scales equals free. Oops. Plus Okay. Um, oh. You can reorder within TFIDF. Great. Okay. Obviously, this is something that we do all the time. Uh, oops. Cord flip. And then we should probably mutate grade equals as dot factor grade. Okay. So this is obviously something that I do a lot. I should probably create it just like a little helper function that can do all this for me, but you know, I like to waste some time. What are we seeing here? 10 bombing way law. So what is going on here? I'm seeing a lot of Spanish words that are making it a little, um, a little skewed. So maybe, um, people who's who are writing Spanish reviews were more likely to rate a higher review. But what we can see here is that people who, who, who rate a zero are very angry. They're always saying greedy EA force and greed company. It's not really about the game. I would say it's mostly about EA, which is kind of disrespectful to the game developers, but I don't know, but we, I think in the last two weeks, we went over TFIDF, but we also went over, uh, weighted at log odds. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, cause realistically, oops, realistically, uh, okay. We kind of want to look at frequency more than actual rareness. Cause we can see how it gets skewed based off of these, um, multi, um, multiple languages, right? It's kind of, it's kind of messing us up. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do bind log odds. And this is where it's grade, uh, uh, word and right. Okay. We have our log odds. And then what we're going to do is throw this in, right. And we're going to have to replace TFIDF with log odds. Not a big deal. Right. 
boom let's see if it's different it should i would say it should be different and that's what it does it is different notice how there's less spanish words which is probably a good thing because the majority of the text reviews are i'm assuming in english so we get a more um accurate description of what are the identifiable words for each sub each group okay so let's look at bombing crossing amazing animal stop that makes sense series so they liked animal crossing they're probably huge animal crossing fans they say it's understandable i think that they're probably probably talking about i think with animal crossing they had a late release May, that this is um i'm kind of you know reaching but maybe that's something to do with it um so six you can see repetitive poorly interesting ramp i'm not sure what the ramp if, if that is a significant thing 10 i'm not sure what this is 1p talk resident quick harvest i'm not sure again zero still makes sense though if we see zero stars it's mostly about saying something about being greedy and they're kind of angry about the maybe the company or the gameplay i'm not really sure but i think when we're looking at this we we get what i'm thinking is okay well if we take an account that the actual ratings um are kind of like a binary thing where it's about 10 and zero where most if like most people are not rating five six or sevens between this um median range and it's mostly zeros and tens uh we can see that there is some distinction right here and it seems like something that i think would be generalizable um people are saying that these negative words are probably are more likely to say uh give a bad rating people are saying amazing um talking about the actual animals and the gameplay are more likely to rate uh, a higher rate uh rating okay so let's do that um yeah let's, let's let's start doing some nlp modeling so nlp modeling 101 uh if you don't know what model to do you should probably just do a lasso regression um lasso regression is essentially a logistic regression but it allows some feature elimination uh so um, you can just kind of give it a large corpus or a large amount of feature sets and just allow the model to select the most relevant features and in this case we're just going to give it a lot of these tokens um, and then it'll just kind of remove the tokens that are unnecessary or kind of worthless so that's what we're going to do um, we'll set our c to 42 uh, we'll say tidy data df select and we don't want the username so i'm fine with removing that uh, Oh, it's a, what is it? User review. User reviews tidy data. Now, I'm not really sure the best way to, um, the, the best way to do these tidy models, to be honest. Um, I'm still learning it, but I kind of have a, if an okay understanding of it, what I do, what, what I've realized when I've been creating these models is I have a lot of variables and it seems like a lot of like one-time use variables. I'm not sure the best way to do it. But we're just going to do it anyways. So tidy split initial split. We'll say tidy data and our initial split. Let's see. We'll do p equals 0.8. Just an 80 20 split. Uh, tidy train training. Uh, tidy split. And then we'll do tidy test testing. Uh, oops, tidy, oops, tidy split. Cool. So we have our split data. Um, I'm going to write that, right? Partition data. Now we'll create our recipe. So we'll say, uh, we'll call it our text recipe, right? So now that I realize we need to actually load in the text recipes package. This is just a, another package that's kind of a subset of the recipes package and text recipes um, comes with all these cool things. So we can do, you know, basically tokenization without tidy text or it might actually use tidy text. I'm not sure, but we have a, a recipe way of doing it. Okay. So text recipe, oops. Uh, and we'll say recipe and we're trying to predict grade based off of our text. Our data is our tidy train. So we got that and we're going to first tokenize our, our text. Oh, step, step, tokenize. And the thing that we're trying to tokenize is our text. 
we're actually going to remove our stop words so we can do step to, uh, step stop words and with those tokens it'll remove any tokens that are in the stop words list and then what we're going to do is we're going to do step token filter our text and we'll say so we're only going to use the words that we're going to use the most frequent 500 words okay so what are we doing what are we doing right now um we're tokenizing our words we're removing our stop words and we're doing a token filter now when i was doing this at first um i kept on running into an error saying i needed a numeric and i thought the tokenization would just automatically do the term frequency however you need to add that step so you have to say add step term frequency you can also tfidf um i'm just going to do term frequency right so step uh, step term frequency which is a little odd because i thought since token filter uses the max tokens of 500, I thought it would kind of assume that it's already counting it, but it doesn't. So you have to always add step TF or TF IDF. Cool. We have our text recipe. Let's view it. Right. Tokenize, stop word removal, text filtering, term frequency. Makes sense. Uh, we'll do text prep, text, uh, what recipe, and then we'll prep it. Right, so that's gonna run. Okay, we'll look at that. Yep, doing what we want. No missing data, 2,480 points. Okay. What we're also gonna do is, this is what I've been doing for this. Um, I'm also gonna throw in my cross-validation or um, sampling for Caesar. So cross-validation, uh, V fold, Oop, v fold cv uh and we'll do tidy train v equals 10 and i'll say repeats equals 10. cool we'll get it tenfold cross validation repeated 10 times carrot gold standard cool okay yep repeat you can see there's 100 100 times dope now what I also want to do is create the workflow right here. So and I'll I'll call this I'll call this workflow, right? So work uh ooh, shit. workflow. We need you know this is a thing that we always have to add our workflow. So we add our recipe that we created, and we have our workflow. Right. So now let's actually get into the modeling stuff. You know, modeling stuff is the best part. Um, but it also is the most annoying part, to be honest, because you have to uh, wait for it to train, which is annoying. But we're going to create our lasso model. Okay. And our lasso model, we're actually, it's it's under the linear regression, right? Um, with our linear regression, we if you know, we actually have two things, our penalty and our mixture. For our penalty, this is how much it wants to, like, remove... Uh, like how, how many variables it's actually going to remove depending on the penalty parameter. So we don't really know that yet. So oh, I've been selling penalty wrong. Um, so we're just going to let tune it. But for the mixture, we're going to say mixture equals one. And this mixture is essentially a, uh, it's deciding if you want to do L1 or L2 regularization. In this case, since we want to do lasso, it's uh, mixture equals one. Um, mixture equals one basically allows it to completely shrink the coefficients to zero. If you want to do ridge regression where you don't want to remove all of it, um, you would you would switch it to zero. Or I think if you want to do um, essentially a elastic net, which is basically a combination of ridge and lasso, where it can both eliminate features and also shrink them to a very small amount, you can do that where you can kind of um, make it into a tune. So mixture equals one is a lasso, mixture equals zero is a ridge, and mixture is tune is a elastic net, I believe. And first, I'm going to do this set mo oop, set mode since we're trying to predict the uh, you know the the grade, and we're just going to assume it's a continuous variable, even though I was using it as a categorical variable. Um, we're just going to do it as a regression problem, and to finally do it is we're going to set engine glm net. So just kind of going back on the mixtures of L1 and L2 regularization or lasso versus ridge regression. Um, when I first was learning about lasso regression, I was kind of thinking like, why wouldn't you want lasso regression, right? It, you know, the NP problem where you want you want to shrink 
you don't want to have too many variables into your model. And it's better if all else fails to have less variables, right? But the idea of between bridge regression is if you're creating these interaction effects, uh, you don't want to actually eliminate the source of the interaction. Um, so you, so one way to do that is just shrink it very small. And that's what ridge regression is good at. Cool. Um, yeah, so let's first print our awesome model to make sure it's working. Yep, we're doing that. GLnet is the engine that we, I think we always use. And then we're going to set a lasso grid. Uh, we'll just do a regular grid. And since we want to tune our penalty, and I always spell penalty wrong, which is really annoying. And we'll say levels equals, uh, uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So I would say levels equals 10. Okay. Now we're going to tune the model. Also tune, tune grid. Okay. We give it, we first give it a workflow because it has to, you know, re retrain a model, give it the recipes with all of our cross validated data cross-validation sets. So add model, lasso model. Then we give it resamples equals cross-validation. And then our grid that we want it to tune off of is the lasso grid. I think that's it. Okay, so what it's saying is we're gonna train a lasso model with the mixture equals one and tune the parameters given with the grid that we created. And we're gonna tune it on all of these folds and we're going to average out the fold average out the results to get the best most robust results this is going to take a while i think um because i actually did uh repeats equals 10. i probably shouldn't have done that but we're just gonna let it sit i'm also gonna document some of this so say i'm using weighted log odds and um using weighted log odds using tf idf uh, say clustering of the top 25 words for each grade using PCA and visualizing it. Okay. So brief look, oops, look at grade di oh, distribution. I probably spelled that wrong. Okay. So that's gonna be running. Um, I'm gonna cut this video and I'll resume it when it stops running. Okay, my lasso model is finished training. I actually changed the cross validation so it only is just 10 folds and it doesn't repeat. So that way it decreases it by, you know, like 90%. So we have our lasso tuned. Um, we can kind of look at that. Oops, comes with all our metrics. Um, we can kind of say, uh, uh, poll dot metrics, right? Our penalty, we can visualize that. Try it mean. Oh, uh, what's going on here? And uh, we'll just tidy it. What the? I'll show this. Uh, I'll select dot metrics, tidy it. Does that work? What the hell? Oh yeah, no, I have to do the, uh, the collect metrics. What am I doing? Collect metrics. Boom. There you go. See, that's, that's one thing that I kind of, I always forget that you kind of have to do these weird functions and I already mentioned this in the video, but we'll just, we'll just go through it. Uh, spelled penalty wrong again. Cool. Done. Oh. Oh, mean. Uh, 
Okay. What are we seeing? Um, we can see that right here. We can a penalty of like what is that point? You know, point oh five or whatever is probably the best best metric. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say lasso tune. Um, was it select uh, best uh, metric, and then we'll say RMSE penalty of point oh seven. Okay. So we're gonna do our best tune. So um, lasso best tune. Okay, and we'll say final lasso model finalize. Oops, finalize model lasso model lasso best tune. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna train up the final workflow. So we'll say fi final lasso final actually lasso we'll just call it lasso workflow uh work well add recipe add model final lasso model and then we'll give you the final the lasso eval so lasso eval um lasso workflow last fit tidy split so now we're training the final lasso model onto the data set and evaluating it on, on the uh, total training set and evaluating so right um so we can just kind of uh what is it can we do collect metrics collect metrics yeah okay and we see our our root mean squared error is 3.47. Again, if you think about it, it's not great, right? But it's it's matching what our actual validation set was doing. So what we should do is think about doing either a stronger model or more feature engineering. In this case, I'm just gonna do a stronger model just for uh, example sake. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to train up a random forest model. So that's what we're going to do. So random forest model, random forest. Um, and this, in this case, I really don't want to do, go through the actual tuning parameters of it. So we're just going to set some things as the default. Um, so I believe the, uh, the kind of the standard rule for um, the standard rule for like M tree or the amount of features you want to use for each um, tree is a square root of the total features you have. So square root of 500 tokens or 500 features is about 22. So I'm going to say 25. I'm also going to use a thousand trees just for, you know, why not? Um, and then the minimum amount of samples is just 20. Uh, I, that's completely arbitrary, but I just want to show you how, show everyone how that you can just kind of train up a, f a more powerful model. Um, okay. And since we're not really tuning anything, we're just going to do, um, uh, we'll do, uh, we're just gonna, we're going to train the model based off of the cross validation and kind of evaluate the average result, average, uh, um, metrics or average, uh, yeah, average metrics from th those um, tenfold validation. So I'm trying to figure out what was I calling it. Um, I'll say I guess it's technically eval. No, it's not. So I'll say random. I'll say random forest tune. Okay, and this in this case since we're, we don't have a tune grid, right? We're not tuning based off something. We're just gonna fit it to the resamples. So it's actually called just fit resamples. We give it our random forest model. Um, we give it the recipe and then we give it the, our cross validation. If you know, this is essentially like a, a recipe, but we're just kind of giving it explicitly. Um, I'm going to run this. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but I'll probably just, um, cut the video and we'll come back when it finishes. Oh, what the random forest tune. Oh, random forest model. Okay. Yep. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. So the random forest finally, 
um, finished training and I pulled the tuning from it so we can see how 10, 10 cross, 10 fold cross validation. Um, we can collect the metrics, right? And we see that the average root mean squared error is 2.9, right? Which is, which is a little bit better. And since we don't really have any tuning, we can actually kind of do, um, the final evaluation on the model. Uh, so we can just, we'll just do that. Uh, final RF workflow, uh, work. Workflow, add recipe, text recipe, add model, random forest model. Okay. And then we can do the final RF eval. Oops. Final RF workflow. And then the last fit, tidy split. Okay, and we'll kind of compare the uh, um, the evals to each other, I guess. Just gonna set this up. Uh, what the? Okay. Uh, well, I will, okay, there we go. So we can do that, collect metrics 2.75. Uh, can I do a mutate on that? Uh, mutate model equals RF. Yeah, okay. And then we can do like a R bind and then mutate model equals, uh, was it lasso? Lasso. Right. Cool. So we have our metrics and then we can just do a ggplot it. X equals model, Y equals dot estimate, color equals model, plus geom, calm, oh, fill, fill. Plus facet wrap dot metrics scales equals free. It's probably dot metric. Okay. Okay. So what do we see here? Higher R squared, lower root mean squared error. Therefore, we can kind of conclude that the random forest model performs better than the last regression. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Um, a random forest can do a little bit more complicated transformations to the data. But, you know, um, the random forest model takes way longer to train. The lasso regression is pretty short. You know, it can allow so for some feature engine feature elimination. So you can use, use it to kind of inform what type of features you want. Okay. So we can say RF is, has, oops, has better performance than lasso. Okay. All fine and dandy. Now. We're going to kind of go a little crazy and do something that I probably wouldn't recommend for this type of, um, data set, but, um, I've been doing some, using some Keras stuff and I thought, you know, finally we can do some actual NLP modeling or some neural network stuff in Keras. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to first give it a Keras. We're going to create a Keras DF. Uh, we'll deselect, um, username. So we have all that, just grades and uh, text. And what we can do is we're actually going to, we can partition it in some different ways. Well, first, what we need to do is the actual tokenization. And I, I'm kind of, I, I would do it with text recipes, but I'm not as comfortable with text recipes. Plus Keras comes with a lot of um, nice tokenization feature um, functions, especially since, um, Keras will take in different kind of forms of data, whereas tidy model is kind of relies on tibbles, um, or nested tibbles. So that's what we're going to do. First, we're going to specify our max, 
features. So our max features is going to be the max amount of words. It's essentially the, you know, max words that we, max tokens. So if we're, since we're doing a neural network, I'm fine with actually having a huge amount of features. So we'll say max features is 2000. And now what we have to do is actually develop a tokenizer. Um, so we're going to say tokenizer and we'll say text tokenizer Ooh, text. Oh, I need to load up Keras. What am I doing? Library Keras. Okay. So then we do text tokenizer. Our num words is equal to our max features. So this is our max amount of words. And what we're going to do is we're going to fit it to our data. So in this case, we're going to do cares df text. Why is okay. Dope. So we have our tokenizer. It's fit to the um, text. So it's finding out, you know, top 2000 words, most frequent words. Okay. And then what we're going to have to do, and this is going to, you know, this is going to take a little bit because it's actually doing the, uh, you know, tokenization, but we also, um, want to decide how we're going to do this. And for me, um, I'm going to do a one hot encoding instead of the basic, um, bag of words trick. Um, it's, it's kind of up to the person, but we're going to make the model a little bit simpler. So, um, if we look at our tokenizer, oh, we can see how it has all this stuff, right? Um, sequence of text, stuff like that. Um, sequence of text generator, splits, text matrix, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, we can kind of worry about that later. I'm just going to do a one hot encoded matrix. So one hot results text to sequence. Oh no, text to, text to, uh, what? Oh, text, text to matrix. So we're going to convert our Keras DF text and, um, stuff like that to a one hot encoded matrix. So we're going to give our tokenizer tokenizer equals tokenizer. Um, our text will be Keras DF text and our mode will be binary. We can always change it to frequency or, uh, we can do like, instead of a one hot encoded, we do frequency, but I'm just going to do a binary matrix. Um, and that's just because we want to make it simple. We want to train it really fast. Okay. I'm also going to do a word index just in case if we need to like, uh, reference the predictions and stuff like that, but we probably, we won't be needing it, but it's nice to always have. Okay. So we have that. What we need to do is actually split the, uh, the train and test sets. And in this case, I'm just going to use the carrot package because I think the partitioning is a little bit easier with this, um, because you get the actual row indices where as, uh, I think with, uh, with the tidy models, they don't really give you that stuff, right? They kind of just give you the, uh, that thing, right? So they, they have that, but I don't know. I don't know if it's, if, if I should be doing it or not, we might do it. And eh, now we'll do it. We'll do it. Why, why not? Why not? We'll do it. Sorry about that. I'm a little indecisive about that stuff, but we can do it. Tidy in. Okay, and I'm assuming tidy split out ID is the inverse. Oh, um, oh well, okay. So tidy split in ID. So we'll say, um, what we need to do is actually specify the X, the training sets or the training inputs, the testing inputs and the training, uh, uh, how do I guess it? We need to do the train test inputs and the train test outputs. And these are going to be defined as X and Y. Okay. So we'll say X train. And this, in this case, we're going to do uh, one hot results. Boom. And we're going to specify all the columns, one hot results. And then we'll do the one Y train, one hot results. And this time we're going to ignore all the indexes in the train, right? And just to verify, uh, X train dim 2,400 Y train dim 599. Cool. And then what we're going to do is X test, 
Um, and that will be uh, Keras DF grade tidy split oops, split in ID. So we're only grabbing the Keras DF grades um, that correspond. Oh, oh fuck. Okay, that correspond with um, the train set, and then we'll do the, the opposite, right? So anything that did was included, we're not going to include anymore. Okay. So X train dim X test length 2400, right? And then if we do uh, uh, Y train Y test, they should be the same and they are great. Um, what we also have to do, I need a, I'm just going to go back here and expand all this stuff. I don't know the shortcut to expand all of it. So I'm just gonna have to independently clean it. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Okay. So what we also need to do is pad the sequences. So it's going to give it, um, all this stuff, but we actually only want a specific amount of words. In this case, we need to figure out how many words there are. So if we look at the user reviews, um, uh, unnest tokens, word, text. And then we just like, uh, count the username and just do a summary. We can find the distribution of amount of words for each review. So on average, uh, the average review length is 120 words. So that's what we're going to say. So, uh, max length, we'll say the max length we want is 120 uh, one words and in this case, I'll do 128 just cause it'll be like, it's, you know, it's in the, uh, I guess, was it base two? So max length is 128. And now we have to pad the sequences. So if it doesn't have 128 words, it'll pad it and I just add little spaces. If it doesn't, if it has more than 128 words, it'll just kind of drop it. Okay. So we'll do X train pad sequences. Um, X train max length equals max length. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do is, uh, okay. X train Y train. Oh, well, I actually messed this up. Just that X test. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. And then Y, Y train. Y test. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. I had that a little split. So this is saying X train and X, the train test sets for inputs are these one hot results. The train test sets for the Y results are the grades. Uh, okay. So we have pad X train and then X test pad sequences, X test max length equals max length. Right. And Let's see here if we, right, boom. Okay. Now, since we had our padding, so we're going to say create the, um, X train and test inputs and outputs also apply padding to the, um, inputs, right? So now let's actually create a model. So this will be our model. Oh my, how do I, oh, well model, um, Keras model, uh, sequential. Generally, you're always going to do a sequential model. Um, since, uh, we, we, since we have this matrix, we always will, we want to create our own embedding. So what we do is layer embedding, and this is what you do for most text data. And the input dimension is equal to the max amount of features, which is our input dimension is obviously going to be 2000 words, right? Cause we're creating a one hot encoded matrix of 2000 words or 2000 tokens. Okay. And our output dim, um, and this is what is basically our, uh, our embedding. So we're going to say 16 for now. 
is completely arbitrary, and that's when you actually would probably tune it. And our input length is max length, because our max length is 128 with the amount of 2,000 words. Okay. So what it's, what is it doing? It's what what are word embeddings? Word embeddings are essentially um, ways that the model can map out all of these tokens into a representative state. Um, the biggest, probably the most common example is the word to vec algorithm, where it essentially can put say king and queen into the same feature space. It's kind of doing a PCA um, clustering, but it does it in a different way. I would say the the intuition I got from layer embeddings is basically a layer embedding is kind of like a translator for the model to actually understand the language and to map it out to a prediction. Okay. Uh, another very famous word embedding um, model is the BERT model, which is a bi-directional LSTM model. And that kind of does a lot of the grunt work where people will use um, the BERT embeddings as a source for their, um, for their top level model architecture. So they'll have a BERT model, which would be this, and then they would build upon, you know, a generic neural network on top of it, which would use those embeddings, which allows it to the model to really understand the text, um, without training on millions of data. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say layer flatten because it's in a uh, 16 dimensional thing. And what we're going to do since it's a regression problem is just say layer dense units equals one with no activation function, right? It's just going to output the thing. Okay. Um, and I, I just want to kind of go over this first. Um, the, the main problem with NLP modeling is that we actually don't have enough data. So a common thing that people do is use other pre-trained models such as, um, BERT, uh, word to vec, which is just embedding, um, stuff like that. And the idea is since we don't have millions and millions of text data, to have our model actually our neural network to actually learn or do some NL natural language understanding. We'll let like people like Google and Apple do that work where they have billions of records of text data and they're able to train, um, models that can replicate natural language understanding. And then we can use that model to basically be the translator of, of basic data and build upon it. Cause if you think about it, when we're creating, say our last regression model, we're not recreating the algorithm. We're just kind of using that algorithm and tuning it. And the same thing applies with NLP modeling, where we're usually just, it's usually easier to use someone else's or some other company's um, NLP model and build upon it. Okay. In this case, we're not doing that. We're creating our own embeddings, but it's something that you should be well aware of. And it's a common trick in NLP um, and, and, and the NLP field. Okay. So what we're going to do is look at our model first. And you can see this is a very basic model. It's like a two layer model. You know, it has an embedding layer, flattens it, and then has an output layer. Okay. So what we need to do now is compile the model. We're going to compile it. Our optimizer will, oh, will be RMS prop. You can use, you know, other things like Atom, stuff like that. But for this, we're just going to do the baseline RMS prop. Our loss function will be mean squared error. And the metrics that we want to track, I'm going to say is mean absolute error. Uh, it's the most easiest to interpret and we'll just do that. Even though we could use RMSC, um, I'm just going to do mean absolute error. Okay. We compile it. And now we are actually going to do the fit. So history model fit, and we'll say X train, Y train validation split. So what we're going to do is actually split our train set. Um, so we can kind of have a validation set, um, epochs or amount of times it's going to run. We're going to say 100, um, batch size. Oops. I'll say it's 64. Why not? So it's going to run the, it's going to run the entire data set through the model hundred times using, um, back prop to tune the model. We're going to use, uh, and each time we're going to put data, we're going to do increments of 64. So it's going to do it 64 divided by, what is it? Wait, 3000. So I won't, I won't do Kara's X train dim. So 2,400 divided by 64. So 2,400 divided by 64. Uh, so it's going to do like 37 times 
to count as one epoch. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Fit. Okay, so you can see it's starting to run. Um, you can see each epoch is going, and we can evaluate our um, loss. Oops, we can evaluate our losses and stuff like that. So we can see our mean absolute error is decreasing. Our validation mean absolute error is decreasing. Um, our loss is also uh, staying, staying relative the same. Okay, it's keep it's going and going. Okay, and we can also go in our studio and kind of look at it right here. Um, we can kind of just view and step back and watch it watch it train. So you see our mean absolute error is going down, while our I would say our validation mean absolute error is kind of it's decreasing, but it's a little bit volatile. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What, what are we doing? Oops. Okay. So we have that. Okay. And we can just, um, do a summarization and just say plot history. And we can see it. We can see basically our training validation goes up, goes way down. You see our validation error goes down, but it kind of, kind of plateaus, right? And this is something where realistically, we don't have a very complex model um, or, or neural network, right? It's only a few layers. So what we could do is, you know, create more embeddings, right? We could increase the amount of embeddings like 32, add another activation layer and see how that works. But uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to, I think this video is getting a little bit long, but we'll just kind of evaluate because I think that's basically where it's going to stop. It's starting to lift a little bit, but the uh, validation mean absolute error is lifting a little bit on average, but we're just going to evaluate it. So what you can say is, I think it's evaluate model, give it the uh, X test and Y test and see what it does, right? Mean absolute error is 3.9. Okay. What's saying the model is not great, but the model is pretty fast. It was faster to train than most of it. And we, what we were also using is one hot encoded vectors. Um, one way we can increase uh, performance is probably change that to a frequency. We also train it maybe to a TF-IDF. We could also um, add more things. So instead of doing just a one hot encoded vector, we could do a sequence of vectors. So it could maybe understand word placement and stuff like that. We could also increase the amount of features and also increase the max length. So yeah. Um, what, what, what the, so yeah, that was basically the, you know, a brief summary of, um, NLP modeling from lasso regression to a actual neural network using word embeddings. Um, I'll see you guys next week and tidy on.